crafty friends it's jess from jesscrafts.com and today i'm here with a five cards one stamp set video featuring picket fence studios like a crafty fox stamp set picket fence studios did recently reach out to me and ask me if i wanted to work with some of their stamps and share them on my channel or blog, etc. So they did send me these in exchange for my design work, but I accepted them because I felt like they were a high quality product and they suited the kind of crafting that I like to do. So just want to be clear there. Uh, as I color the foxes, I'm using YR07, 04, and 02 for my oranges. And I'm using W00, 1, 3, and 5 for the grays. When I'm coloring the areas that I want to appear more of like a whitish gray, I'm going to stop at W3. And then when I go to the legs, which have more of a black color, if you look at an actual picture of a fox, I'm going to go all the way to the W7. I never like to use the actual Copic black marker for black it's usually way too dark I occasionally have used it for other things but I tend to stick to using the darker W C's N's etc the gray markers I am trying to color these foxes with like relative accuracy I'm gonna only show you coloring one fox but I did color two of each fox from the stamp set and there are four foxes in the stamp set so i have eight foxes to work with and as i'm coloring i'm doing some really basic shadows and shading for instance with the foxes i want their faces to appear round so i'm putting my shadows on either side of the face and leaving a highlight in the center of the face or with their tail, I want it to be darkest where it connects with the body. And that's partly about shadows and shading, but it's also partly about just trying to get a more accurate fox look because they do have this sort of orange color that fades into a light gray slash white color on their tail, for instance. And so I thought it was easier if I kept the shadows really simple to do that. So there you can actually see the Picket Fence Studios complete stamp set. There's a couple of fun sentiments in it as well. I won't use all of the different sentiments. I just kind of use the ones that I felt like I would have either a purpose for or would be good for donating. I'm going to do five cards with very similar colors. So if you saw the cards at the beginning, you notice there's like just orange and blue. And orange and blue contrast really well. So they look great together. And I was trying to keep it simple, just kind of show you like a couple of techniques you could do so that you could easily adapt this to whatever stamp set you like. Like, I think this is a really cute stamp set from Picket Fence Studios, and I will have it linked in the video description in case it's something you want to check out. But I also just wanted to show you how you could pick a single stamp set in your collection and make a bunch of cards at one time that are all slightly different. Like I'm not going to change my ink, but you could change your ink and that would, you know, make them seem a little bit more different than each other. So I'm going to stamp using my Misty two of the Fox with the love ya and your pack sentiment, but I'm going to mix up the final cards a little bit. I just figured, you know, for the sake of being quick, it made more sense to stamp them both at the same time. I'm using VersaFine ink because it'll give me a nice crisp clear impression and I want it to be waterproof because one of my techniques is going to be involving water. And I've already done all my Copic coloring so I'm not going to need to have a Copic safe ink. I wouldn't recommend VersaFine for Copic but for sentiments and crisp images it's great. So I took one of the Love You panels and now I'm going to add some additional foxes to it. I have done this before on my channel and it's one of my favorite like go-to things to do with stamp sets to like use a bunch of the images because often I like all the images in the stamp set but to color them all and incorporate them all into a card is very time consuming. So as a quick way of getting all the cute images in there 
without having to color them all, it can be fun to pick one to be your focal image, which in this case will be the running fox, and then stamp the rest and leave them black and white. So as I go on, you'll kind of see what I mean here. But I did get a little bit of ink where I didn't want it. What I do find is that the VersaFine ink is actually really easy to pick up with your Tombow Mono eraser. And it's a little harder to pick up a dye ink. So that's another reason that sometimes when I'm doing this stamping, I do prefer to work with the VersaFine. I have a couple of stamp blocks that I've put all of the different other foxes on and I'm just sort of seeing how they piece together. I know I'm not going to be able to fill every little white space. I'm just trying to get a variety of foxes on there. And by having each one on its own stamp block, I am better able to kind of fit them together because I don't feel like I have to stamp all of the same one together. I also do tend to, if like the running fox is my focal image, I'm not going to stamp him again. I'm going to only use the other foxes from the stamp set to fill in the extra space. A lot of times stamp sets will have like little images too, like hearts and stuff that you can use to fill in some of those empty spaces or additional sentiments. And you can have some extra sentiments and that could be a fun way too. If it doesn't have hearts, something that might be um, fun to add in at the end. I, I mean, I didn't do it, but as an idea, if you felt like this card had like too many gaps or whatever, would be to come in with like little die cut hearts or little enamel hearts or circles, etc., and use that to fill up the space. So with all of the fox images that I colored, so here actually this fox that I'm about to put on the card is one of my messed up foxes because he should have white at the bottom. I, you saw me coloring this image at the beginning. No, this is a different image than I colored. But like you saw when I colored the, the fox image at the beginning, I left the bottom of his face white. I should have done that with this fox too to make him a bit more realistic. But I wasn't thinking about it at the time. And I thought it was still cute enough to, you know, keep colored. Uh, Picket Fence Studios sent me the coordinating dyes for this stamp set. I don't buy a lot of coordinating dyes. And not because they're not great, because they are. They are very convenient. It's just that I have a scan and cut. And so to get my money's worth out of that and to save myself some crafting money, I do tend to let my scan and cut cut things or I fussy cut things. But having dies is really nice. So the fact that they sent me them was like, I got to work with this at first because I do enjoy myself uh, having that... Um, that coordinating die set but anyway what I did was to pop them all up because I knew I would want dimension because I knew I was going to do some cleaner simple ideas just so I could get five cards quickly I decided to die cut each fox three times once was the colored image and then two more times just out of solid white scraps of cardstock so I could stack them together and it could create like one really sort of heavy adhesive or sorry, heavy, um, I don't know, like element for the card. Anyway, something you're going to see me do a few times throughout this video is I want a little peak of orange cardstock to be behind this image or behind this panel, which I have cut with my lawn fawn stitched rectangles. I think that just having a little extra pop of color in between the panel and the card base helps everything stand out more, but I like for it to really coordinate and I am not the kind of person who keeps like oh, every color of orange cardstock on hand. It's just not something that I do. So with that in mind, what I tend to do is I just use a white piece of cardstock and then I get one of the Copic markers that I colored with and I just run it down the sides and then I have a perfectly color coordinated orange banner there and I can use that instead of having to have the perfect color of orange cardstock. So I'm going to do my second card. I had that one with all the black and white images. I am putting it on some of the orange cardstock. I'm going to do that again for this card. But here what I'm doing is a very simple technique. 
I'm putting a bit of Distress Oxide ink, although you could totally do this with regular Distress ink, pretty similar effect either way, smushing it all over a block, stamp block, and I prefer to use mine that have like the sort of interesting scalloped edge, but you could do whatever you like. And then I am spritzing it with some water. The key is not to do too much water. It's always hard to know what's gonna to be too much and the Tim Holtz sprayer does give you a bit of control with that. I'm going to smush it down onto my cardstock and this is just plain cardstock. This is not watercolor cardstock or anything fancy. And then I let it sit there for a while. This whole video is at like double speed. Um, I try not to go too fast because um, I thought it was fine to have a longer video if I was going to show you five different ideas. You never know what you're going to get when you do this. You never, you, sometimes you get a really solid image, sometimes you get more splotchy. You can use a couple of colors together and that tends to look really great. I like that look too. Here I was just going for simple because like I said, I just really liked the way that the blue and orange and the blue that I'm using is Salty Ocean, I believe. Um, so Salty Ocean Distress Oxiding, I will use continuously. And just because like, for me, I was again, if I was gonna try to craft a bunch of cards at once, not switching inks is one way you could potentially make it a bit faster, but also switching inks wouldn't take that much time. And that could make them feel a little bit more different. So, you know, do what suits you. One thing that was awesome about having done this in my Misty is that now I could come back and I could darken all of those lines. Because once you put the Distress Oxide ink over all that stamping, it really like dulled it a little bit. It had sort of like film on top of it. And so re-stamping was a great idea. Now, you also might be thinking, why are you bothering to stamp the fox? Because like you're just covering it with the die cut image. And it was mostly because like I wanted to know where everything was placed. So I wanted to make sure that when I placed my stamp block with all the ink on it that I know it covered the fox in a way that I liked. Okay, so now we're on to a new card. This card, I am actually working directly on the card base. I'm just going for it and hoping my idea works out and that I do a pretty good job. So I have a finger dauber. You can get these at your local craft store. I think scrapbook.com sells them in like big giant packs for a great price too. I'll link some, but you probably have some of these like finger daubers and they create these pretty perfect looking little circles. And it, it, I think if you see the finished card, you're probably going to assume it's a stencil and you just kind of like filled in the stencil. But I think this is actually even easier. So basically I staggered them and I'm just pushing it into the Distress Oxide ink and placing it onto the paper. And I'm just using good, even, firm pressure. I think the Distress Oxide ink is a good idea for this technique versus the regular Distress inks, just because that pigment part of it is going to give it a little bit more of a full coverage look. But I find that Distress Oxide inks actually dry, unlike a lot of pigment inks. If you have like just a pure pigment ink, I just find they smear a lot and that drives me nuts because I don't want my finished card getting all messed up later. Anyway, so like as you can see, I kind of showed you on the side there, that's like, that's the card base. And ideally, you'd let this dry so that you don't smear it, but here I am rushing <laughs> and I'm going to start sort of placing down my images. I'm just being really careful so that I don't smear those blue ink dots there. I'm going to pick a sentiment. I really like the love you and your pack sentiment, but I thought the I only howl for you fit better. And then I added a fox. I put the fox in the blue and the sentiment out of it so that you could really read the sentiment very well. Moving on to my fourth card now. Now I'm going to pull out a stencil. Again, this is more just to show you that you can like use a variety of techniques but not necessarily a lot of like product because I'm still using the one same stamp set and the one same ink. I don't have to have every color of Distress Oxide ink to still have a lot of fun with the other products that I do have. So I taped my white cardstock to the stencil. I think that that's easier. I know a lot of people can do it without 
taping it down, but it shifts and that bothers me. So a little bit of low tack painters tape does the trick for me. My thought here and what I want to kind of like highlight about this card is that in order to make the fox and sentiment stand out, I'm going to pick a portion of my card to highlight. There's going to be a part of the stenciling that is just a much lighter blue. And I'm not going to use two colors of blue. I'm just going to use a much lighter touch. I'm going to, you know, get a lot of it off of my blending tool before I go in. And so that just a little bit's coming off. You can smear it on your paper or you can just kind of use it up like I am. I'm using it to make the sides darker. And then go in and really darken all the sides so that you have a very clear highlight area. Like that's intentional. I'm meaning to do that. And I'm meaning to do that so that when the fox goes there, your eye is kind of drawn to him because your eye is noticing, oh, look, that sort of area with less color, what's going on there. So just sort of like, I guess not really an art tip, but like if you want to draw some attention to your image and still use a fun stencil, and again, one color of ink, that could be one way that you do a little bit more. So I wasn't sure which fox I wanted to use, which sentiment I wanted to use, because again, that's why I just colored a whole bunch at the beginning so that I could really just sort of play with the stamp set. Um, I think that that is a fun idea to just have a bunch of images ready to go. And um, actually just thinking today, this is November 1st, 2019, is the start of Kathy Rakusen's 30 day coloring challenge. And I'm not very good at participating in them, but I know a lot of people are and they like just color a whole bunch of images for that. And then they go back and make cards later. So this could be like a fun way where you're like, you know, if you have a pile of images, because I don't know about you, but I love to just sometimes just color. So I do wind up with actually their little baggies because I um, like to keep like a stamp set together. So I have this big bowl on my craft table with pre-colored images and because I just sometimes want to color and relax. And so this could be a fun way to like, all right, now I want to turn these into cards I'm sharing like five-ish ideas of how you might, well, five ideas, <laughs> how you might turn them into cards because there are five cards featured in the video. So again, I'm just going to use the love you in your pack. I don't know, like that one really appeals to me. I am trying to use all of the foxes in the stamp set, but this, that one on the left there that I have in my left hand is perfect for the I howl for you sentiment. Um, I thought, you know, with a saying like your pack, maybe I should try to make a pack of foxes. But in the end, I really just liked that walking fox looking backwards. And I think I don't actually use that cute fox that I have right there on the card now. Like the, she looks kind of girly to me. I think it's because the eyelashes, but they might all have eyelashes. No, they don't all. Yeah. Anyway, the she's kind of like more the girly looking fox. I don't even know if I actually use her, even though she is so cute. Okay. Another technique. This time I am using an embossing folder. And again, I'm just gonna use the blue. You could create five cards with one stencil and just use different colors instead. Like if that's how you wanna use a bunch, but I was, just getting, I was just trying to show you some like different ideas. So I've taken this embossing folder. This is a deep etched one from We Are Memory Keepers. That is gorgeous, I love it. I don't use a lot of embossing uh, uh, folders. And I don't buy a lot of embossing folders, but if I had to be like, buy just one embossing folder or buy just some embossing folders, I really would recommend these We Are Memory Keeper ones because they are like really deeply etched. So you get like really gorgeous dimension from them. So I wiped my Distress Oxide ink, still the same Salty Ocean Distress Oxide ink, and I wiped it all over this, the embossing, inside of the embossing folder. I spritzed it with water. I put my regular cardstock, this is not watercolor paper, inside and ran it through my die cut machine with the embossing setting. So whatever the embossing setting for your machine is, embossing folder setting. And it just added some color into the grooves. It's again, it's again just like that first technique with the, or sorry, I guess the second card where you put it on the Distress Oxide ink on the block. It never is going to look the same way again. Like no two are going to be exactly the same. This is not a technique for people who really want a very, very consistent look. 
but it adds some fun color. However, I wanted a bit more color, so I am coming in and I'm blending a bit more blue ink. And basically what I'm gonna do is use that darker blue area to highlight my sentiment and my fox. So the only thing I will say about using embossing folders, especially these gorgeous deep etched ones from We Are Memory Keepers, is it can get a little bit awkward to tape things down to it because you don't have a flat surface anymore. Instead, you have all this dimension. And so taping down little tiny images or, you know, adhering down however you like to can be a little bit tricky. You might want to try um, liquid glue. That might be a little bit more forgiving, but Distress Oxide ink is going to react with a lot of liquid glues because they tend to be water-based. Here, I'm just trying to decide what I'm doing with the foxes. <laughs> Um, but I come up with a totally different idea. Although I think I'm going to run out of video. I think I actually forget to film the end, but basically, so let me make sure I tell you what I did there. I eventually decided I like this howling fox and the howling sentiment again. Like I just, I knew I could use those. So I'm going to die cut another panel and that goes back to the adhesive thing. So here's my lawn fawn stitch rectangles, which I've used in this video. So again, using a lot of the same similar supplies, not coming up with new stuff to use, keeping it a bit more simple. And I'm gonna put the sentiment down and him, and I'm gonna put that on like a white piece of cardstock. And having a large piece of cardstock means I get to use a lot of adhesive and it will be more likely to stick to this dimensional background versus trying to glue down something much smaller. So yeah, again, I lost the end of that video. I'm so sorry, but that's it for me today. I hope this gave you some fun ideas to use up your colored images or to just work with a bunch of cards for one stamp set. So thank you so much for watching. I will leave you links in the video description below to the products that I used. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I have done five cards, one stamp set videos in the past. So I'll be sure to link you to some of those. And thank you so much for spending this time with me. Bye.